welcome to triple n media i am dr nick nickam this is a clinical ekg book chapter 13 pacemaker rhythms before we proceed any further i would like you to take a look at my clinical ekg book on amazon.com and let us begin with the feature presentation today we're going to be looking at the pacemaker rhythms atrial pacing ventricular pacing biventricular pacing cardiac resynchronization therapy pacemaker programming and much more here is an x-ray showing a pacemaker and we will look at that in more detail in the next slide as you can see this is the power pack or the battery and to that are attached all these electrodes if you look at carefully there are three different electrodes here 1 2 3 one is coiled up in the right atrium and that is the atrial electrode and there's another electrode that is going all the way into the right ventricular cavity towards the apex that is the right ventricular electrode and we have a third one which is going through the coronary sinus into the lateral cardiac vein so this is a pacemaker which is uh, used for crt or cardiac cardiac resynchronization therapy in addition to that if you look at there there are some thick bands here and here which means this is a, a pacemaker defibrillator so there are a lot of uh, hardware here with a tremendous amount of technology built into this and we are going to find out how to identify a pacemaker rhythm how to identify pacemaker uh, malfunction and how to program pacemakers how pacemakers work and what can be done to improve patient's quality of life and here is a single chamber pacemaker similar to the one we saw in the previous one it has only one electrode and these thick bands represent that this is a single chamber icd or intracardiac defibrillator the pacemakers have this nbd nomenclature with four letters or maybe fifth one in some cases the first letter represents the chamber that is paced it could be the atria ventricle it could be dual chamber or none the second letter represents the chamber which is sensed it could be same thing atria ventricle dual or none the third letter represents sensing inhibition trigger dual and none and the fourth one is the rate responsive let's keep this in mind and let's proceed further if v v i means it is ventricular paced ventricular sensed and ventricular inhibited whereas d d d r represents dual chamber pace dual chamber pacing dual chamber sensing inhibited and rate responsive crt stands for cardiac resynchronization therapy which i already showed you on the x ray when we started icd represents intracardiac defibrillator which can be an isolated device or it could be combined with any type of pacemaker it could be a vvi pacemaker with a icd which is what we saw on the x ray or it could be a dual chamber or crt with a an icd which we saw also there are a number of functions built into that pacemaker battery pack it is like a, a miniature computer that not only knows how to detect heartbeat missing heartbeat how to stimulate the heart how to create an electrical impulse but it can also track the heart rate it can track uh, the rhythm and it can shock the heart so there are a number of functions built into this system and let's talk about lower rate limit this pacemaker is set at a lower rate like 50 sometimes 40 or maybe 60 below which if the heart rate drops the pacemaker will take over this is to allow for the heart's natural 
electrical system to function as much as possible to maintain the synchrony uh, between the ventricles and also between the atria and the ventricles. Detect rate. Detect rate is used to identify arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response or ventricular tachycardia with rapid rate. So here, for example, if a rate is set at 170 per minute, it, as soon as the heart rate hits 170, the pacemaker computer analyzes, is this a narrow QRS complex tachycardia or is this a wide QRS tachycardia? If it is wide, tachy, wide QRS tachycardia, it compares the morphology of the QRS complex to that was there before the tachycardia began. And that's how it tries to differentiate between uh, supraventricular with aberration versus uh, ventricular tachycardia. It also detects the atrial rhythm. And the next item is uh, stimulation. Once a heart stays still for a certain period, then the pacemaker kicks in. The pacemaker sends an electrical impulse. This electrical impulse activates the myocardium. As you know, heart myocardium functions on the theory of all or none. When you stimulate one part of the myocardium, the entire myocardium will get activated in a sequence as the impulse travels from the site of uh, activation to the rest of the myocardium. All right, here is uh, the stimulation which has an impulse, which has an amplitude, that is the voltage and also the time duration. And these two determine how strong the impulse is trying to activate the ventricle. And when we put the pacemaker for the first time, we try to find out the minimum amplitude and voltage needed. Usually the time is set to 40 milliseconds. What's the minimum voltage needed? And from there, we slightly increase it two to three times so that it will function in most circumstances. Now let's talk about capture. The pacemaker may detect lack of heartbeat. It may come in and pace the heart with an electrical impulse, but that doesn't necessarily mean the heart is going to be activated. Because first of all, the impulse has to touch the myocardium and activate it. The area the electrode touches has to be a normal viable myocardium. If it's a scar, it's not going to be able to activate. If the pacemaker tip is unstable, it is jumping, then it may activate sometime and sometimes it may not activate. That's why it is very important. Just delivering the impulse is not good enough. The impulse has to be captured. And sometimes if it doesn't, we have like failure to capture. That's something we need to recognize and we can detect that very easily on an electrocardiogram. When, once the energy is delivered, you want to make sure the myocardium is able to capture the impulse and also transmit to the other parts of the body. The transmission depends upon if the right and the left bundle are functional. If they are blocked, of course, you're going to see those blocks uh, uh, as before. Okay. In addition to the functions which I already talked about, there are a whole number of other functions built into these pacemakers, such as anti-tachycardia feature. If a patient is having atrial fibrillation, paroxysmal atrial fibrillation with a rapid rate, it may try to override that rate and see if it can break the tachycardia. Same thing with ventricular tachycardia. High energy shock protection. As your going around, you are surrounded by high energy, short bursts of impulses. It could be electromagnetic waves or microwave. So all these pacemakers are shielded against these electromagnetic impulses. Or if during surgery, if a surgeon is using an electric cautery, that can create some unwanted signals for the pacemaker to think that this is a tachycardia. And nowadays, uh, these pacemakers are well shielded or before these patients go for surgery, if the surgeon has to work in close proximity to the place where the pacemaker box is located, they may have to put the pacemaker on a fixed rate so it will not be triggered by these rapid frequent uh, 
these rapid frequency impulses. Most pacemakers today are MRI safe and they can go through the MRI without having any interference. And of course, every patient who has a pacemaker has to be monitored. More and more people are able to get home devices and they can transmit them through their Wi-Fi or through the telephone, their pacemaker uh, recordings and also rhythms. Enough of a theory background, now it is your turn. Let's start off with this rhythm strip and just take a few moments and just describe what you see. And when you are done, I am going to proceed and explain what we are seeing. And these sharp spikes we are seeing are the pacemaker spikes. In every lead you see, that's the pacemaker spike, which is very narrow, which is uh, maybe less than one box. Remember we said the pulse width is 40 milliseconds and one box is equal to 40 milliseconds. In most cases, it is just like a straight line. You hardly ever see the width being 40 milliseconds. Anyway, we see a pacemaker spike here, then we see a blip here. That is the atrial activation. So this is an atrial pacemaker lead producing an atrial activation. And after that, there is a little pause because when the atria are activated, we want to give time for the atrial mechanical contraction to squeeze the blood into the ventricle. That is why we have this PR interval. When the PR interval reaches a set limit, which is set by you as a programmer in the pacemaker battery, it waits. If the normal QRS complex rhythm comes in, then it just sits quiet. If there's no impulse uh, seen in the ventricle, then the ventricle is activated or ventricles are activated. And that produces a negative deflection going away from the pacemaker tip towards the left side and up. So this is a so this is a atrial pacing and ventricular pacing rhythm. So this patient has significant conduction disturbances at the sinus node level at the AV node level and at uh, and hence it is requiring both the atria and the ventricle to be paced. Here we have a normal atrial activity with the P wave followed by a short PR interval. Remember look at the PR interval here versus the PR interval. The PR interval is set by the uh, the, the electrophysiologist or the programmer to optimize the output from the atria into the ventricles during a cardiac cycle. That, when the pacemaker doesn't sense a QRS coming from the natural conduction system, it paces the ventricle. So we have the atrial sensing, ventricular pacing, atrial sensing and ventricular pacing. Let's look at this one here. What do we see? We have an atrial sensing here. There's a, like a short PR interval here. It could be a delta wave, I don't know, but uh, we are talking about pacemakers, so let's focus on that. Short PR interval, and then we have a, what looks like a, maybe a regular QRS complex. So this is atrial pacing and ventricular sensing. Contrast this with this one, which was atrial pacing and ventricular pacing. If you remember these, some of these tracings, and imprint them in your mind and you're sitting in an exam hall, you should be able to quickly recognize what kind of a rhythm you're dealing with, what kind of a pacemaker you're dealing with. You can also determine if the patient has a like CRT, that is the cardiac resynchronization therapy. And here we have a normal looking P and a normal looking QRS throughout the tracing. So this is atrial sensing and ventricular sensing. sensing. If this patient has a pacemaker, that's what if this patient has a pacemaker, it is a sensing and it is letting the heart do the work because the heart electrical system is designed to provide optimal cardiac performance. So we want the heart to be able to use its own rhythm. In addition, it also saves battery energy. Let's talk about benefits of CRT. CRT is generally used in patients with chronic heart failure, 
we are talking about congestive dilated cardiomyopathy heart failure in patients who have a QRS complex of greater than 140 milliseconds who have low ejection fraction and in these patients chronic cardiac resynchronization therapy has been shown to improve the sequence of contraction between the right and the left ventricle synchronization of the right and the left ventricular contraction at the same time and improve forward cardiac output by almost 20 percent improve dramatically some of the symptoms uh, experienced by these patients and over a period of time it will also improve the left ventricular ejection fraction it reduces the symptoms of dyspnea weakness and fatigue and since these patients if if these patients have an ejection fraction less than 35%, they may also have a, an intracardiac defibrillator built into this CRT pacemaker. So that's a great marvelous device. It's quite expensive too. Anyway, let's continue with our diagnostic test. Okay, what do you see here? Take a moment, just analyze the tracing and match the P, QRS, and whatever blips you see. Okay, we are seeing a sharp electrical impulse here, which is consistent, and that is followed by a biphasic P wave, which is unusual, and then we have a narrow QRS complex. So we have a atrial pacing, ventricular sensing rhythm. Got it? Good, let's look at the next one. Okay, what do you see here? Let me give you a couple of minutes. Take a look at this and just interpret what you see then we'll try to analyze if this pacemaker is working normally or not okay what do we see here we have a see a little blip here so i see a pacemaker blip here the pacemaker blip is before the qrs complex before the pacemaker spike there is a normal looking p wave so we have a, a p wave normal P wave followed by atrial sensing followed by ventricular pacing. Now let's look at the direction of the QRS complex. Now let's look at the direction of the QRS complexes which is quite interesting in this particular tracing. The deflection is positive in lead 1 and the deflection is negative in 2, 3 and AVF and it is also positive in V1. That means the impulse is coming. Let me see if I can go back to the x-ray here. Okay, the impulse is coming from the left towards the right. And the impulse is coming from the left and it is going downwards because it, it, it's from the left and it is going upwards. From the left it's going upwards and that's why we see negative deflection in the inferior leads. So let's go back to our tracing here. So this is a case of a CRT, chronic resynchronization treatment with three electrodes. Of course, the atria is being sensed. We have ventricular pacing. Sometimes you may get lucky. You can see a little split electrical activity here coming from the right and the left uh, ventricular electrodes. But generally, the distance between those two is extremely narrow okay that's uh, another pacemaker it seems to be working fine because we don't see any gaps and the ventricles are capturing nicely that's good let's move on to the next one so take a moment and see what we are seeing and what is your diagnosis okay here we are looking at a p wave morphology which looks like atrial fibrillation the ventricular rate seems to be steady and the ventricles are paced at, at a fixed rate. This is similar to the QRS complex we saw in the previous EKG with a positive deflection in V1, I'm sorry, lead 1 and uh, maybe a positive deflection or no. Anyway, so you can see 1 and AVL, it is positive. So this could be another example of a cardiac resynchronization therapy but however the patient has developed atrial fibrillation that's why we don't see any atrial activity and here is an example 
of uh, atrial sensing and we have ventricular pacing which looks like left bundle branch block and uh, all the way it looks like left bundle branch block with left anterior hemi block uh, unless we know what the QRS complex looks when the rate is faster and the, when the pacemaker is suppressed we don't know if it is due to the pacemaker or due to the underlying bundle branch block but nonetheless the ventricle seems to be capturing well without any missed beats and the atria seems to be sensed or sensed okay here is an example of uh, a pacemaker spike here you see and the QRS complex is extremely wide. This is like a, a patient with a significant myocardial disease. Look at the QRS complex is more than 200 milliseconds. So when you see something like this, you worry about electrolyte imbalances like hyperkalemia, something like that. So even though the patient has pacemaker, we can still identify some ischemic or metabolic changes by looking at the morphology of uh, this uh, QRS and the ST segments. So this is a pacemaker rhythm, but I'm concerned about all the metabolic numbers, especially potassium, magnesium, and things like that. Okay, here is another example of a ventricular pacer. This is going down now in the inferior leads, and we have a positive deflection V1. Whenever you see a positive deflection in V1, you always have to think about the possibility of a chronic resynchronization pacemaker setup. Okay, one more example here. Okay, what do we see? We have a best thing is to start in V1 where we can identify the PVS very clearly and then go from there or lead two, even that will be good. So we have a P wave, QRS, atria sensed, paced, sensed, paced, sensed, paced, and here, if you look at it, it is falling too close to the P wave. So I think there's an issue with the ventricular sensing. It is not sensing the QRS complex, or maybe the, the P wave is so small, maybe it is not recognizing the P wave properly, and here it was able to recognize, even then we have a, like a varying morphology of P waves, which can account for the lack of this pacemaker not being able to recognize this blip. So I don't think the pacemaker is recognizing this as a, an atrial beat contraction. And here it clearly has a one atrial pacing and then ventricular pacing, atrial pacing, ventricular pacing, but somehow here, uh, it, the atrial electrode thinks this is the beat, but ventricular electrode is not uh, looking at it as a beat, so there could be some issue with uh, sensing by the ventricular electrode. That's something can be looked at while, during programming. All right, there are a lot of problems with pacemakers, just like with any other electric or electronic device. And pacemaker is the most complex electronic device that is implanted in your chest, which weighs no more than two ounces, that is 60 grams. And you will be amazed at the number of uh, challenges we face when we try to troubleshoot a pacemaker malfunction. There could be lead misplacement. Sometimes leads just jump off their sight and float in the chambers and talked about improper sensing the previous EKG I showed you there could be improper pacing that is you see an electrical spike but there's no atrial or ventricular activity so that is improper pacing no improper capture the battery power can be low and it will indicate us when we do the pacemaker programming or uh, you have three years of battery life or you have three months of battery life and when the battery drops to three months that's the time to replace the battery inadequate rate response that is uh, with exertion with exercise the heart is supposed to beat faster and the pacemaker is supposed to go faster and sometimes it may not work properly and that's something that has to be troubleshooted during programming. Sometimes we have a pacemaker which just 
keeps going fast without any explanation and that has to be reprogrammed. And of course, pacemaker site infection can create a whole new set of problems because if the infection is pretty significant, you have to remove the pacemaker, you have to put a temporary pacemaker, wait for six, six months, go on the other side and try to put a new permanent pacemaker. So ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching the clinical EKG book uh, chapter 13, which is pacemaker rhythm. I hope this has been useful and educational to you. And we have chapters on all these uh, different topics. Please uh, take a moment to watch those videos and please, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will see you next time. Thank you.